Hello, everybody. April Perry and Jonathan Baylor back with another sane show. And today we're talking about fast food for kids. Now, I got an email from Jonathan with this link to a study, and it upset him quite a bit. Now, I looked at the study and I thought, I don't really understand why he's so upset. So, we've got to record a podcast on this. And he promised there'd be no swearing. This is going to be totally child friendly, right, Jonathan? Absolutely. And it's it's funny, actually, I got to give a shout out to my mom, uh, Mary Rose, or mom, as I call her. And, and, and <laughs> because she is, she is such a, a, a cute and wonderful lady. She will physically mail me things uh, like clipping, <laughs> clipping. She will physically mail clippings from the newspaper to me. And there's so many things about that that are not compatible with like the way I live my life. <laughs> It's like it's in the mail, it's from a newspaper, but it's cool. So this was so she always sends me these things because she's awesome and she she but this she sent me this and I was like Yes, please. All right. So it's a, a study that came out from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and it's called Caloric Intake from Fast Food Among Children and Adolescents in the United States. And uh, the data was collected between 2011 and 2012. The study was just published recently. You can find it online. It was published in September of 2015. And uh, what it did is it looked at <clears throat> the rates of children and their consumption of fast food. And there was some really, really shocking statistics that they found. So I just want to share a couple. And then I also want to share how one of the statistics that is buried in the study and why it's very interesting. And then I also want to empower folks like what you're going to think this podcast is about when you hear these statistics and what this podcast is going to end up being about are very different. So please listen all the way to the end. Does that sound okay? <laughs> okay. I'm actually really excited about this. <laughs> all right. So the, the key statistics to sort of kick us off here was that this study found shocking level, maybe not that shocking, but a shocking level of fast food intake among children and ad adolescents, specifically that over one third of children and adolescents consume fast food on a given day. So on any given day, a third of all children and adolescents are consuming fast food and possibly more shocking is that the average, the average daily um, or the average uh, percentage of a child or adolescent's caloric intake is 12.4% is of a child or adolescent's caloric intake on average is coming from fast food per day. Okay, so and that is a lot, but what did you think it was? Because it didn't surprise me when I heard that. I thought, okay, thinking about all the fast food restaurants around us, thinking about how many moms are running to soccer, thinking about how many times you're going to grab pizza or grab some hamburgers or grab some burritos from somewhere. That just seems like it's pretty normal. So what did you what did you think it was? Well, I thought, I mean, so I personally don't yet have children. And okay. back when I was in school, we didn't have fast food restaurants in schools. Okay. So maybe I'm just dating myself a little bit here, but okay. the idea that fast food would be consumed daily. I, I mean, maybe people are like, wow, Jonathan, that ivory tower <laughs> that you live in. I mean, I, I was just, that. that is a little bit, shocking to me if if for nothing else because and maybe this is odd to me fast food is expensive and i all day all i hear is how expensive sane eating is and you go to mcdonald's like my lunch costs less than two dollars yeah. easily easily yeah. try to fill up on less than two dollars at mcdonald's yeah it's not possible no it's not possible not. so the thing that shocked me the most about this was one i didn't realize that as a country we could afford to feed our children yeah. fast food every okay. day based on sense. how much I hear that spending $5 on dinner is too much. Yeah. Like that's, people say that to me, but I look at a value meal at McDonald's and yeah, it's $7. $6, $7, totally. Okay. Cool. So that was the biggest thing. But so that shocked me. The amount shocked me. But then the thing that I love, because this is so when I was doing my 10 years of just reading studies, this is so common. So there's these like headlines, like kids eat a lot of fast food. But then there's other data in the study that they don't really talk about. And let me give you an example here. So this there's this footnote in this study which says, no, I'm just reading it directly from the study. So there's no Jonathan Baylorizing here. This is just <laughs> from the study. No significant differences in caloric intake from fast food were noted by sex, poverty status, or weight status. So let's just try to simplify that even more by eliminating some of the words. So no significant differences in caloric intake from fast food were, no were noted by weight status. 
And what that actually means is if you look in the study, kids who weren't overweight actually got a higher percentage of their calories from fast food slightly than kids who were overweight. Wow. So think about that for a second. Like to me, an interesting headline of this study is one, Americans can afford to feed their children fast food, which is way more expensive than home cooked food, which actually tells me that this is less mm -hmm. of a money problem and more of a time problem, but yeah. that's a side note. Two, that overweight children that, that we just think the, you know need to exercise more, like let's go move more. That's the problem, overweight kids. You're just not mm -hmm. exercising enough. They're actually eating fewer calories from fast food than non-overweight children are. Well, then that leads you to ask the question then, because then so many people will say, well, then fast food isn't contributing to someone being overweight. If people who are eating the most fast food are not overweight. Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly, that? and that's, well, so the key thing here is we want to do, when it comes to weight, people want to trivialize this issue. People want to yeah. say, it's just because we're eating so much fast food, or we just need to exercise more, or we just need to eat less. You know, I, I bet if you look at those overweight kids, you might notice that their parents could be a little bit overweight and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they have different body structures than everyone else. Okay. And okay. maybe the fact that weight has about 60% genetic influence on it is a pretty yeah. big deal. So like yeah. just telling overweight kids that, you know, you're lazy and you just need to eat less fast food. I mean, they are eating less fast food. That's what's actually really interesting about this study. They're actually eating less fast food. So saying, oh, fast food's the problem, that actually, it's actually not the problem. And one of the things that I wanted to share in today's podcast is how fast food doesn't, I mean, just like carbs aren't good or bad, protein isn't good or bad, fat isn't good or bad. F food that is prepared quickly isn't necessarily mm -hmm. bad. Like there's, you can eat 100% of your calories from fast food restaurants if you make the right selections and be quite healthy. Okay, okay, well see, that's helpful because as a mother, I'm wanting to know, okay, so what's the, the therefore what? I mean, based on this information, looking at the study, how much the children are eating fast food, as I'm looking at my budget, as I'm looking at the health of my children, what should I be thinking about? What do I need to know so that I'm making a really wise choice with what I feed my family? Yeah, so the very the very first thing, so getting back to the thing that shocked me the most, which was I perceive fast food is expensive. So if, if, if cost is an issue, mm -hmm. I, I know, I, and I can prove with math that if the choice is between eating insanely at fast food restaurants and cooking sanely at home, mm -hmm. cooking sanely at home is less expensive. Now, yeah. it will take more time. Possibly, I don't know. Have you seen the lines at fast food restaurant at lunchtime? <laughs> it's true, it's true. I mean, so people, I mean, it's, it's how do we, yes, the act of getting it handed to you in the drive through window doesn't take that much time, but driving to a fast food restaurant, getting oh the food, bringing it back home versus going to the grocery store once a week. I mean, we, if we're gonna make comparisons, let's compare apples to apples, or let's yeah. compare salmon to salmon to be a little bit more safe. <laughs> yeah, and you, know, and you do, you, you're gonna have to switch your schedule a little bit because I will say when I was in high school, we had a lunch pass, I could leave my school and I could go get lunch with my friends and I could come back. So while I would do that, I would go to a fast food restaurant pretty much every day when I was in high school at certain periods of time, depending on the year, mostly my senior year. But what I found was that that time when I was driving to and from, that was during my lunch break at school when I couldn't be home preparing food, right? Like you're gonna have to switch it a little bit. But I will say I now have a high schooler who doesn't eat fast food really ever. I mean, very rarely, unless it's, you know, healthy salads or she'll help make some good choices at some fast food restaurants. But we found we can bulk prepare. She can take it for, you know, leftovers to dinner. We got some good containers and it works really well. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. So it's, we got to look at it from a, from a cost perspective. So just, if you're saying, oh, I, I struggle with sanity because it's so expensive. Look at where you're spending your money right now. Cause apparently Americans are spending quite a bit of money on <laughs> yeah. fast food. Second thing is that it's not bad to eat fast food. I, Chipotle is one of my favorite places to eat in the entire world. Shout out to Chipotle. I don't own stock in Chipotle, but like recently <laughs> I was traveling for a conference and the food they were serving at the conference was a complete disaster. So what me and the individual I was traveling with, who's an awesome guy by the name of Tyler Archer, 
was we went to we found we went to our phones and we typed in where we were and Chipotle and we tried to find the, the, the closest Chipotle and we bought two Chipotles per day in bulk so that we could just have Chipotle okay. on hand. But we didn't like when we were at Chipotle, we get a salad and we get the salad with and it has beans on it. Oh, my Jonathan <laughs> Baylor eats beans. But that's not on the far right of the same spectrum. Oh, my goodness. So it's just Chipotle salad with double chicken. And I have my beans and I have all the salsas except the corn one. And I get extra spicy salsa because I like the spicy salsa. And then sometimes I get guac and I always get additional lettuce on the top. And it's delicious and it's filling and wonderful. And I can eat it. If I had my druthers and I had a Chipotle around my house, I'd probably eat it once a day. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I think that that's really helpful. And I think that I like, I like what you're saying where we're talking about if you are concerned about pricing. Let's look at what you can make at home and do quickly and they'll take with you. But then I love also that you're saying if you are eating fast food, I think now what it is, it's a process of teaching our children what to order, right? Like I've actually started taking pictures of menus and I've been collecting them so we can talk about them on a future podcast, but be able to say like, what would you order here? You know, kind of put these, do these case studies because if you can train your kids, here's what you order at this restaurant. Here's what you order at this restaurant. Here's the best choices at all these places you're going to go. There is nothing that a teenager wants more than to be able to feel comfortable hanging out with their friends. That's, I mean, maybe there's other things they do want more, but that's one of the main things that I found is like teenagers want to be able to go hang out. They want to feel comfortable. Kids want to go hang out at Carl's Jr. after school together, the restaurant down the corner. This idea of a hangout or a place to just be with your friends and enjoying food is something that's really common. So when you say to your kids, no fast food, fast food is bad. You need to be eating hard boiled eggs and celery sticks or whatever it is that you know you're gonna have. I, then the kids are feeling like you're gonna ostracize me and make me completely antisocial. But I think when we can just switch things a little bit and there can be a combination, you can kind of bring some of your own stuff to eat before or after, pick something that's healthy to eat there. I think it's training our children and training our nation what are the things that are best to eat at a fast food restaurant? What are the things we shouldn't be eating? And how can you create a balance that's going to work for your budget and for your health? Yeah, and it's very consistent with everything we talk about with saying, which is again, we're not demonizing fat or protein or carbs. We're saying make the most nutrient dense choice nutrient dense choices within those macronutrient categories. Fast food is just a type of restaurant. And you can make saner choices at McDonald's. Right. McDonald's has chicken salad without toxic dressing put on top of it. Right. Yeah. Chipotle is incredibly sane if you don't wrap it in a lard flour tortilla and put a bunch of processed nonsense on top of it. Asian yeah. restaurants are some of the easiest restaurants in the world to be sane at because it's a huge amount of vegetables. Get it with more vegetables, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of on top of rice. And if you have a grocery store near you, I mean, grocery stores are getting in the prepared food business like, uh, like, very fast, right? So okay, most grocery okay. stores now, you can get prepared food at a grocery store and it's like buffet style, right? So you can be like, give me some of these veggies, give me some of this delicious protein and you can build your nutrient dense protein, whole food fats and non-starchy vegetable plate really easily at most grocery stores. So grocery stores are almost like the new and sanest fast food option. So just because you're on the go, just because you're trying to get stuff fast doesn't mean you can't be sane. You can be extremely sane. Okay, so can we make that our stretch goal to be able to learn how to eat healthfully at a grocery store? Because that's something I don't really know how to do yet. Tell us maybe step by step. I walk into a grocery store, any standard grocery store? Well, I, yeah, I mean, any standard grocery store that has produce usually will have a, a okay. salad bar. I mean, gro this is high margin for grocery stores because they can charge okay. a lot more money for prepared food. So you're just going to okay. go to wherever they have their prepared food and you're going to make okay. your same plate just like you always would. So you're gonna fill up half your plate with non-starchy vegetables. Okay. So you can probably do that at the salad bar, or you could do that with some spinach that they cook for you in the pre-prepared food yeah, section. Okay, okay. So, and then, so you've got half your plate of non-starchy vegetables, then you pick up a nutrient dense protein. So that's meat okay. or fish oftentimes. Okay. And then if you wanna throw some some nuts or seeds or your sauce is, is, is fatty, or you get some, some hard boiled eggs from the salad bar and it's, it's just, you know, paint by numbers, non-starchy vegetables, nutrient-dense protein, whole food fats, and grocery stores. When I say eat at a grocery store, I don't mean go into the aisle, buy a bag of okay. spinach <laughs> and pound it. I mean, the grocery <laughs> store has prepared foods at it. Get the prepared foods from the prepared food section that they cook every day. Like yeah. that, that's what I'm talking about. Like Whole Foods does this okay. like 
gangbusters, but it's really expensive. Okay. But most yeah. grocery stores in general do as well. But you know what? I think it does work at a regular grocery store too. Like I found when our family was traveling, we would I would actually bring with me knife, forks, paper plates, or sometimes they would even have that if they have some sort of little restaurant there. I would buy a rotisserie chicken. I'd buy a big bag of baby carrots. I'd get some bunch of different things that we could get eat together as a family. That really works. That makes it doable for your family. So I love that, being able to learn how you're going to eat a meal at a grocery store. And then next actions, what would you suggest that are next action? Well, next act, well, and I, I'm gonna give you, I have to give you one more story. I'm sorry, I know we're at okay. time, but when okay. I was actually visiting you and we were traveling from seeing you to go see my brother, we did this, we did the, the grocery store stop and they didn't have prepared foods, but what they did have is they had rotisserie chicken. So we bought some rotisserie chicken. They did have bags of uh, pre-washed uh, kale and it was all cut up and okay. I, Grocery stores are actually starting to do all kinds of fun stuff with like yeah. zoodles, zucchini noodles. I mean, mm -hmm. this the sanity is catching on. So we got some some vegetables in a bag, and we were able to get some plastic silverware. And then we went to the baking section to buy some raw nuts because if okay. you go to the snack food section, you're going to get nuts with a bunch of nonsense on them. So we wanted wow. some walnuts, just plain walnuts. We got them in the baking section, and we were able to fill ourselves up deliciously in our car, and it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, I love that idea. Okay. All right, so the next action, are you ready? Ready. <laughs> the next action I would say is if you do have fast food spots that you frequent or you need to frequent because of your job or because of just your life situation, just they do have sane options at them. The only fast food restaurants are probably like pizza places can be hard to go sane at because everything is fundamentally pizza. <laughs> but other than that, there's almost always, you know, get the chicken sandwich, get the grilled chicken sandwich and just ask them for extra lettuce and don't eat the bun. Or at the Chipotle, get more of the good stuff, less of the bad stuff. So identify your two most common restaurants, say, or fast food restaurants that you go to and just try to look up their menus online, identify two sane options and make those your go-to options when you go to those restaurants. Yay, wonderful. Okay, well, this has been a really practical, really applicable podcast. I'm excited to do more of this with my family, train my children so they can do this even when I'm not sitting right there in the car making the order with them. So we encourage you, go ahead, do this, take this challenge, take, take the challenge to be able to reach the stretch goal of being able to eat healthfully while you're on the go. And of course, always remember to stay sane.